Uh, continuing on with uh, uh, part three. I think it's part three at this point. I can't even keep up. But it's um, the next part of uh, this episode of uh, the true story of Comics Gate, where um, we are digging into the the claims of what Comics Gate was supposed to be about. Um, the next one uh, is the much more specious and nebulous claim of wanting no politics in comics. Um, this one is very strange because almost every Comics Gate comic that has been released has either featured overt and blatant political posturing or heavily political aspects to it. Every single creator in Comics Gate claimed to want to create comics based on uh, their political views or their op opposition to other people's political views. You know, the the beginning was, uh, uh, you know, of Comics Gate was how they were against social justice and the SJWs. That right there is inherently political. Now, even if you don't make comics that feature that, which, again, most of Comics Gate's comics do feature that anyway, still your movement is based on politics. So to say that your comics um, are going to be absent of, uh, you know, uh, whatever political, like, you know, it, it, there's a lot of qualifiers for this that people in Comics Gate would try and throw in, like, um, that they didn't want overt politics, or they didn't want the politics to be this that's way not, or that yeah, way. Yeah, but that's not, that those qualifiers come after they've already made the work. Yeah, and after the work has really overt politics that are, you know, basically contradictory to their claims anyways, like, um, um, uh, Mike S. Miller's Lone Star, Lone Star, <laughs> featured a very blatant ripoff of Captain America, like so, such an obvious ripoff of Captain America that if he had, if if the Lone Star character had thrown his shield, Mike S. Miller probably would have been soon sued into oblivion, or soon should have been. That's that's the past tense for sued, right? No, no, no. no. Sued should have. But, but in anyway, that, uh, his ripoff of Captain America... I don't remember because it is a very boring comic, too. Yeah, the, the comic was not only badly written, but there's like a massive continuity flaw on, I think, the third page, which was in the preview pages. It was really stupid. That was the one where uh, Lone Star rescues a lady from some evil gang members, and uh, she picks up one of the guns, he knocks it out of her hand, then he tells her to get a gun. And it, it was just, like, yeah, baffling. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's actually a continuity error on his part or if he seriously thinks. Because, unfortunately, with a lot of these stupid cape fags, is they, they really don't know how to fucking make their uh, their comic book characters behave. Yeah, that, it's like, and it's very, yeah that's very typical of comic book nerds yeah. in general, which Comicsgate consists of comic book nerds. So you you have everything wrong with comic book nerds is uh, fully on display in the movement of Comicsgate. Um, but anyways, what was happening also is uh, Lone Star is beating up the illegal immigrant, immigrant gang of MS-13 and also fighting overtly like communist SJW vampires that are just called that. It's not like um, like there's a uh, an allegory or fucking. Vampires. They are actually vampires. It's not an allegory. It's not a metaphor. Ain't no fucking two ways about it. Yeah, it's not but a metaphor. But they're also just full on communist and uh, SJWs. Without again, it, there's no metaphorical aspect to that. It's it's completely overt. And again, Comicsgate gave, like, uh, I was going to say tens of thousands of dollars to that, but I think it was at least over $100,000 to that book alone. Um, Can you even imagine wasting that much money on anything? But that's just one example. Then also, uh, Ethan Van Skyver's Cyberfrog featured several pages of the main character, Cyberfrog, complaining about Bill Clinton's affair with Monica Lewinsky. Not only to show, like how obsessed with the 90s uh you know comic book nerds are um for lots of reasons that we've gotten into in previous videos. we won't dwell on that but the thing is to show also how kind of irrelevant it is because it's like the worst thing about bill clinton is that he had sex with monica Lewinsky. is that really the worst 
Is this really person. what we're stopping our story to talk about? Yeah, it was it was very bizarre and it was confusing even to Ethan Van Skyver's fans. They're like, why is this in the book? And it turns out it's in the book for no reason. There was it had nothing to do with the story, it had nothing to do with the events of the story, it had nothing to do with like character traits or uh, a character arc or anything. It was just put in because nineties reference. That really was it. Uh, um, nine, do you remember the eighties? Yeah, do you remember the eighties? But anyways, um, examples aside, which there are many more than that, but those examples aside, and any example aside, there's also the idea that every story written is informed by the viewpoints of the creator. So as far as the whole claimed desire for no politics in comics, it sounds like this needed more nuance or qualification. Um, but then, you know, at the same time, after many talks with people who supported Comicsgate, either financially or creatively, no one in the movement ever bothered adding any nuance to either their arguments or even their comics, um, in stark contrast to us, of course. Uh, the next uh, point, another alleged principle that uh, Comicsgate, it was that Comicsgate wanted to reward merit, which right right off the bat is easily disproven with facts and logic by pointing out that Comicsgate funded destroying, comics made by people who have never made comics in their lives. Destroying Comicsgate with facts and logic. Yeah, which is uh, surprisingly Just easy. Thanksgiving Day turkey with facts and logic. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. I mean, Ugh. I mean, oh, okay. Oh, oh, I feel like buying some Bible insurance right now. <laughs> Do you like Bowling Branch sheets too? You like Marty and Sex too? Or are you tripping me out? <laughs> Anyways, um, anyway. so, you know, Comicsgate guess, rewarding uh, merit, I but then... I, I'll just say, I guess Ethan Van Skyver would have had less problems with Bill Clinton if Bill Clinton had sucked somebody's dick. Yeah, or maybe if Bill Clinton went to an island which he could have sex with underage girls. Uh, I don't know. Apparently, apparently, why, apparently, why is uh, Ethan Van Skyver okay with uh, child molestation? Yeah, he, what would he, he, it's a positive of child molestation. Ethan Van Skyver and canonically the character of Cyberfrog did not have a problem with Bill Clinton going to Epstein's Island multiple times, like over 20 times. But the problem he had was Monica Lewinsky. It's very strange, very, very odd. Anyways, she was too, um, feminine. She was too feminine for Ethan yes, Van Too feminine, too grown up. I mean, there's a lot of other problems with Monica Lewinsky, but fucking, you know, I think there are bigger okay. problems. There are bigger problems that uh, uh, Bill Clinton was involved in. Personally, I think those take precedence over him having an affair. That's our opinion. Horrible wife. Just pointing out that this is just another one of our opinions that we will preface by pointing out that it's an opinion of ours. Yes, this is what an opinion is. <laughs> yes. Uh, Once again, we have to teach you people the meanings of ideas, not even of words. But just basic concepts. Well, yeah, in fact, that's one of the, the goofiest things is Comicsgate saying that they wanted to reward merit. And one of the first comics that uh, they funded heavily was Jawbreakers. And uh, uh, it's, you know, in, in Richard's case, uh, people, uh, Richard C. Meyer, ya boy, Zach, who um, is one of the first figures to really blow up around the Comicsgate movement, um, he, you know, there's a lot of aspects to him we could get into, but we'll do an episode about him later. Uh, but Richard C. Meyer, a.k.a. Ya Boy Zach, a.k.a. Diversity in Comics, a.k.a. Comics Matter with Ya Boy Zach. Um, his comic, his only comic that people had known about and had seen publicly before this um, within the movement was his prototype one-shot for Jawbreakers, which he had drawn himself which was so notoriously bad that Nurkish actually became known in the Comicscape movement for um, his roast of Jawbreakers that was uh, brutal. Uh, not only that, uh, you know, pointing out that Jawbreakers were poorly written, but also unintentionally suspiciously homoerotic. Um, 
And the situation with Nurkish and Comics Gate is its own story entirely as well. That'll be another it's upcoming incredible episode. Incredible story. It's the yeah. fucking greatest story never told. Yes. Um, but, but also, it's one that's completely out in the public, and people, even in Comics Gate, not only don't talk about it, but a lot of them we have personally witnessed are confused and clueless about what's going on what you know people wonder you know why is nirkish how come he's not involved with comics why doesn't he go on streams anymore and all of that information has been public for years and comics gate is still bizarrely unaware of it you could say that it's because comics gate is really stupid um but you know me i don't like to judge but uh if you want us to get to that episode sooner uh go to the do- uh go to our patreon and donate to us pay Pigs, you fucking pay you. you yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the alleged desire oh, to reward merit in Comics Gate comes the from skeleton, even the skeletal desire. <laughs> who will who will like the fire of skeletal desire though? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyways, the the alleged desire to reward reward merit in Comics Gate comes from the observation that the comics industry no longer rewarded merit and instead gave people jobs based on minority status or uh, creators who openly supported social justice beliefs. Straight up nepotism, which that's true. That is true. Yeah, all of it, all of that was still true. That that's the thing is that Comics Gate, all they really did was observe it. There was an there was old news by the time of Comics Gate. Yeah, that yes, they did not dis, they did not discover this amazing fact and report on it like some kind of brave truth seekers. They found something that was ancient news already. Yeah, it was warmed. It was a lot of the talking points that Comics Gate started with were warmed over even by that point. Um, you know, uh, and even I, by I, even I, by I the know. time Gamergate started, a lot of the stuff Gamergate was founded and started around was still, you know, basically considered old news. It was just something that was more widely publicized and had like a scandal attached it to. Kind of like movement. a tipping point, or um, it, it was like a, a focal point. Yeah, or critical mass, or something like that. Yeah, finally, something that people could attach themselves to. Mm-hmm. And the thing really is that Comics Gate never really had that either, but that's not important or relevant because there doesn't an, there didn't need to be to a tipping involved. point. Comics Gate should have gotten involved a while before that. Yeah, like basically around the time of Gamergate. In fact, that's one of the things we said when we essentially created the concept of Comics Gate, except the smart version back in 2015. But that's a whole other story and we're not going to get into we're not even going to get into that in this documentary series, most likely, because we've done lots of videos about that in the past. And in fact we've talked to a lot of other creators in Comics Gate who were forced to admit basically that we were right about it. Not a documentary about comic liberty. Yeah. Um which does deserve its own, but uh still that in a way this is about this is about the supremacy of it over Comics Gate's uh, silly little feminist ideals. Um, and they are feminists. Yes. Uh, in, fa- in fact, yeah, a lot of them would behave in feminist ways when... Uh, Very simpery ways. Yes. They, we'll, get to, we'll get to that shit. Yeah, there's there's a lot of simping. There's simping a lot for guys in Comics Gate, as well as some girls who were just kind of unrelated or only tangentially related to the movement. Um but, uh, you know, some of that we may not even get to, but it's it's open out in the public. Uh, fucking, it's part of the story of War Campaign. And again, we plan to get to at least some of that in future episodes. Anyways, um, as far as uh, the whole, you know, uh, uh, Marvel and DC giving people jobs based on whatever, uh, the problem with this in Comicsgate is that the movement replaced the social justice progressive stack with simply claiming you were against social justice. So you would get rewarded. The, the merit you would be rewarded on was saying that you were against social justice. So whoever said they were against social justice allows us was considered to be the best creator, or even worse, the bona fides from working at Marvel or DC. Like a lot of um, uh, uh, Ethan Van Skyver in particular, but also guys like John M- Malin and uh, Mike S. Miller, uh, were guys who worked at Marvel and or DC, and then 
uh, they would gain instant clout by claiming that they had quit the comics companies to in order to join the movement. And uh, not coincidentally, all of these creators turned out to be either middling in talent or overtly mentally ill and obsessed with internet drama, usually a combination of all of the above, of course. Um, another one of the more obscure claims... Uh, of Comicsgate was that it was about repairing the industry by convincing Marvel and sometimes also DC Comics to make comics more in line with their desires, to essentially be beholden, <clears throat> as mentioned in a previous part, that uh, they wanted, you know, it's sort of like the, the customer service claim. They wanted Marvel and DC to listen to the customers and do what the customers were saying. Um, a common refrain from Comicsgate that uh, the health of Marvel is the health of the industry, therefore Marvel's failing quality was what was wrong with the comics industry. However, even as they made these complaints, they would still admit to buying Marvel comics, including most of the ones that they said were terrible. Uh, co when Comicsgate would complain about a comic, a bunch of people in Comicsgate would go buy that comic so they could be like, oh, this is the one that ya boy Zach roasted. And uh, there were, for, it would be encouraging Marvel to make more comics character. like that. That was slightly true with, like, Depression Quest. Mm -hmm. Except the thing is that people still wouldn't buy Depression Quest. <clears throat> that, and, you know, so most yeah, people no, stayed it, away from it. it. it In you know, Gamergate, people stayed away from, like, they didn't buy Zoe Quinn's games. If they were like, oh, EA did this shitty thing, they wouldn't go buy a bunch of those EA games in response. Whereas in Comicsgate... If they would complain about a comic, they would go buy a bunch of it. In fact, they would encourage it openly and publicly. Richard C. Meyer, in particular, would uh, try to start a hashtag movement based on buying the comics that he was complaining about. And, you know, we'll try and get into uh, Move the Needle and Prove the Needle in the Richard C. Meyer episode, if I remember. Because, you know, there's a lot of shit to write down here. Move the Needle, Prove the Needle, Douche with the Needle shove the needle, ram the needle. That was another thing that even Nurkish made fun of back then to the point where some other Comicscape, like just over being made fun of, just jokes about it, people in Comicscape would be like, Nurkish, you're betraying the movement! And you know... They're punching right! They'd just be chanting stuff. It wouldn't punching even be punching right. right. It would be like, they would claim it was a betrayal of the movement just to be made jokes about. This is the kind of movement that Comicsgate was. If you made jokes about it, you were seen as being a betrayer of the entire movement. And this is not like, you know, ironic or fucking self-aware. There was zero self-awareness. People actually not only met this, but this is what caused the collapse of the movement because it wasn't just other supporters of Comicsgate who were saying this, but it was the people at the top, which is another thing Comicsgate can't fucking admit to, and we'll try to get that in the future. But, um... Because that's really what the entire Ethan Van Skyver episode is about. It's about Comicsgate having a leader and not being able to admit that they have a leader as they then openly call him the leader, and he calls himself the that. leader. Not just even that they had a leader. Uh, having a leader was a bad idea. Having a poor leader is uh, the reason why it's a bad idea. Well, you mean bad leader because, of course, the semantics masters at Comicsgate would be like, he's not poor, he's got a lot of money, instead of the the reality of a bad, incompetent leader. Well, bad news for fucking Comicsgate. He's a poor leader in that he's incompetent. And but I don't also, care how much money he has, which he doesn't have that much of either. Yeah, he pretends to have a lot of money, and he creates the visual... Again, uh, some of this... We've gone into this in many, many previous uh, uh, videos. Uh, too many, in fact, but... Um, too many, but never, but also not enough. Not clearly enough. But it should be something we bring up in the episode about him, but uh, we may not even do that because th there's just a lot of incidents of Ethan pretending that he made a lot of money on his crowdfunding campaign and then refusing to fucking admit that uh, a lot of the money was shipping fees. A lot of the money was very suspiciously fake backers. And again, all of that has been gone over many times and, you know, dug into. And uh, nobody else really digs into that either. So most people don't admit it or talk about it. But again, 
that's all for either another episode or just the previous videos we've done that everyone is afraid to watch. Right? Well, I guess we should probably cover it again. Um, you, if know, we have I, to, you know, I think you're right. If we have to, if we feel again. the need, that's the thing. If we feel the need, we'll do it. I don't yeah, care. Exactly. That, that, hence, bring it up right now, even. Anyways, um, so where was I? Uh, the, the whole concept of uh, Marvel, even as they made these complaints, they would still admit to buying Marvel comics, including most of the ones they said were terrible, therefore encouraging Marvel to make more comics of that same terrible type. And then when this was pointed out to supporters of Comicsgate, they would break out into furious screaming fits and insults. Um, weird, like, A-logging, uh, false flagging in some cases. Uh, something, uh, and all of this stuff is something that has not that has been observed not solely by us, but even other supporters and creators from within Comics Gay at the time, which caused some people to just quit the movement after seeing the behavior of other people in Comics Gate, where they're like, if this movement is about, if it's, if Comics Gate is for people who are really whiny, again, not my opinion, because they were objectively whining, um, then this movement's not for me, and that's what other people had said it's even one of the things that I felt at the beginning, uh, even before you know the whole Ethan Van Skyver involvement in Comicsgate was, I you know I'm not going to be part of a movement that's just a bunch of whiny losers, um, and yeah, again quite uh, we quantifiably lose that. He fucking uh, uh, especially Richard C Meyer, but also Ethan Van Skyver is they 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 had a big YouTube following. That was where most of their audience was concentrated, and they lost a lot of uh, fucking. Uh, it was like a uh, fucking, you know, a lot of uh, interaction. Yeah, the the um, yeah the engagement they had dropped off massively to where it's like one percent uh, after you know they plateaued like um, it was a year ago, and they they even they did videos about how like uh, you know we've plateaued and the, the growth for Comics Gate is not increasing which was something that we actually said would happen a year before it happened. But and to the point where other happen. other creators in Comicsgate had to call it and say that we were right about that was going to happen with uh, Comicsgate. And well, not just that it was going to happen and then did happen, but I also have to state now, I don't know if it's ever been stated, it shouldn't have happened. Yeah, it didn't need to happen at all because it was very... <laughs> Comicsgate was given everything on a silver platter and then they just dumped it over and complained no about how SJW was ruined the of success and uh, uh, the audience uh, the audience potential of comic books especially right now where they're at their lowest. Their lowest in history. A, a lot of a lot of this. A lot of this stems from Comicsgate essentially having everything. Having the perfect springboard and what they did was they immediately turned on each other and and accused each other of betraying each other, essentially. And that's where Comicsgate um, immediately imploded as an ideology, but also as a movement, and began shrinking and shrinking. Um, and so it was easy to see that, you know, they would start shrinking from there um, because of, not just because of the, the statistics, but also... Um, because of their open and public behavior, where they were constantly attacking their own other creators and making up false narratives, which then everyone in Comicsgate would believe unquestioningly. So that's where a lot of the downfall of Comicsgate started. Uh, it's really, but it, it's, it's all stems also from Comicsgate's own claimed principles that they couldn't hold to, but also the behavior just of the average supporter of Comicsgate. That is that a lot of them would just lie about shit and and you know um, a lot of them throw really, conditions. A lot of those people in just the comic book medium fan base were truly repugnant people. Yeah, none of this is speculation, by the way. All of this has been actually quantified objectively. Um, by others. Not and even and completely just, undeniable to the point where the, the reason why we keep bringing up that other creators and other supporters of the movement verify this is because that means it's been objectively observed, even by its own... Uh, uh, side, even by Comicsgate. Even Comicsgate was like, you know, a lot of people are just really whiny and, and obsessed with drama. It's it's a fucking legitimate mental illness. 
it's a symptom of bipolar uh, disorder and borderline personality disorder, is an addiction to drama. In fact, I think addiction to drama or drama-addicted individuals or drama-obsessed individuals was a part of the um, mental illness diagnosis that you can objectively observe in not just many supporters of Comicsgate, but also, of course, the leaders of Comicsgate, the top, the top figures. Don't call them leaders if you don't want to, but they are still undeniably uh, the top figures of Comicsgate. That they are completely obsessed with drama, and they're constantly making up false events that have never happened, um, or excuses, or rationalizations, or reasons, or cope, or whatever you want to call it, for why somebody else in their movement now needs to be attacked by the movement and that was constant and it's it's documented and it's um completely undeniable and irrefutable which is why comics gate instead of trying to deny or refute it goes into denial about its existence and pretends it doesn't happen which is why you can never get the true story of comics gate from anyone who is ever involved in the movement um but that's also why a lot of people supporters and creators in Comicsgate wanted us to do this series because they knew that the best way to get the true story of Comicsgate was to have us do it because we were the most objective observer observers and we always have been um so again uh, just to wrap up this point though um a lot of supporters in the movement would break into screaming furious fits and insults uh, something uh, observed not only by us but um even other supporters and creators from the movement. In fact, some major creators in comics right now have confirmed that when, you know, we point out that a lot of supporters in comics gate would break down into whining, screaming bitch fits. Um, other, other creators. In fact, if you're in comics gate, a creator you like and support, in fact, probably multiple have confirmed that we are objectively correct about this. So you're not disagreeing with us. You're disagreeing with what everyone else says and has personally witnessed. So you could have given somebody that money, the too. Facts. That's, that's your money going towards that. Yeah, that's the thing. The people who are responsible for the downfall of Comicsgate are the people that Comicsgate also directly funded. People who were involved with false flagging, uh, um, uh, you know, harassment, attacking gay ops, some actual legitimate crimes and stuff. These are all things that Comicsgate, as a movement, has openly, knowingly funded monetarily and supported um, through their words, which means that the movement itself is corrupt, which then takes all, every single thing in the list of what Comicsgate believes and proves it to be a corrupt belief. Um as well as a false belief, of course. If if any of it is not a corrupt belief, then it's not true. Then, you know, um, Comicsgate doesn't actually believe in any of it. Proven by their actions or their support of other people's um, objectively morally bad and morally incorrect actions. Um, anyways, um, so uh, all, all this, uh, you know, the fucking other people, other supporters and creators from Comicsgate observing that uh, a lot of people in Comicsgate were whiny or lying, pathologically lying, that kind of stuff, uh, led to a lot of confusion about why the movement already featured such blatant hypocrisy and yet was still supposed to have any principles at all. And uh, this was as early as 2018, or for us, uh, around late 2017, in fact, uh, which is around the time me and my brother started having people from Comicsgate come to us because they found it impossible to have an honest conversation with anyone in the movement. As um, even early on, it would lead to pogroms and, and witch hunting and other where other supporters of Comicsgate would be attacked by Comicsgate and then lose faith in the movement and uh, end up watching our videos instead because we were the only people who had any honest critical analysis of Comicsgate and its principles. And that also led to a lot of, um, it in, in fact, increased corruption where other people uh, would then take bribes from the top people in Comicsgate in order to help cover that up. But that's a whole other topic and possibly a, a different video entirely. Um, 
maybe we'll get to that. I don't know. I, I have uh, some uh, some stuff written down. Again, fucking become our pay pigs if you really want to see it that bad. Um, but anyways, by far not the last principle uh, Comics Gate claimed to be about. But the last one we'll discuss right now is... Um, you know, the real wanting to reward merit. And this was disproven when they funded comics by Richard C. Meyer, who's writing a sub fanfic here at best. And even his shorter comics uh, contain rampant continuity flaws, redundant dialogue, and the lowest levels of Bendis tier quips. Um, the principles that we came up with in 2015 blow all of Comics Gate out of the water, but uh, that doesn't matter anymore. Uh, as one of our predecessors said, that time is past. Um, I just realized the wanting to reward merit that we did actually cover that in the earlier part, but that's fine. So we, uh, uh, you know, that's skimming over that this time. That's it for that episode. And we're, we, you know, we tend to deal with a big picture of things. So, um, we're starting with a big picture. And then after this, we'll be getting into more of the actual, um, direct events and happenings within comic skate some of the the real history some of the uh, event history of I guess you could call it the pig picture if we're talking about comic <laughs> yes pig. but uh the next episode will start with uh where where really um comic skate generally started was with with richard c meyer so we'll be getting into uh his history and his story um in the next episode which uh uh We'll have to record eventually. But again, if you want to see this kind of stuff, if you want to encourage us to do more of these videos, make sure to, to go to the Patreon and, and give us money. Um, Five dollars to see. To if you want to discourage us from doing these videos, pay us. Yeah, pay us more money. More. It's it's five dollars to uh, get access to our secret videos. If uh, you don't want to see our videos, twenty dollars. So uh, make sure to... Twenty dollars to not see the big... Who was Stank, Hootie and the Blowfish. Third Eye Blind Triple Bill. A special guest, Hootie and the Blowfish. The Sugar Ray or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, um, make sure to unlike, comment, unsubscribe, uh, false flag our channel if you're in Comicscape because that's what you do. That, uh, historically proven, uh, not our opinion or anything. Um, and remember, uh, don't blame shitty web comics and should have listened to shitty web comics. <laughs>